What's up, Wealth Nation? Did you know that you can create your own banking system in just three simple steps? My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And before we get into those three simple steps, we really have to start understanding exactly what roles do banks play in our lives right now? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But before we go into all of that, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notifications bell so that you are notified when we post new videos. Now, the original purpose for banks were to what? We were supposed to be able to put money in and take money out. Mm -hmm. But over the years, that has, I guess, transformed into banks being the only means of funding for our houses, our cars, for basically our, our entire lives. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So what that's created for us is it's created the necessity for us to always have to ask permission to do the things that should be our God-given right. Right. Yeah, you're right about that. And like you're right, it's all about the evolution because before banks were just a place to hold money mm -hmm. as a storage facility. Right. But now we've evolved to lending and, and being able to, to borrow and credit cards and personal loans and home equity lines of credit. There's so many different opportunities that the banks have created for us to source money. So mm -hmm. if anything, it's just about understanding how the banks work in the first place. Mm -hmm. So like Darius said, banks do what? They collect deposits. What are deposits? All of the money that we bring into the bank from our income. Mm -hmm. And what is the second thing that they do? They then lend. They lend money. Now, how do we start a bank? Well, let's think of a brick and mortar bank or a traditional bank. Well, you need a minimum of about $10 million. <laughs> yep. And when you have $10 million, then you can fill out an application to apply to be a bank owner. Exactly. And you have to get approval. And then you once you get approval and you have your brick and mortar, then you have to have deposits coming into that bank in order for you to maintain the um, overhead. Yeah, exactly. And and with that, you also need to be in a decent part of town because you want people to come to your bank. So you're going to have to invest quite a bit of money to make sure that you have the best location on the block. Exactly. Now, with that understanding, what do you think we have to do in order to maintain our own personal bank? Well, we don't have to necessarily have $10 million, but we do have to have an understanding of our funds. And most importantly, we have to have Kind of like a, our own little spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Because in order for a bank to start, they have to understand their funds. They have to they track have, it. They have to track it. Yeah. So and if, they have to have a purpose. That's really important. Yep. Banks don't get started out of just because there's a good place to, to put it. Banks get started because they have a specific purpose. Either they're going to focus on uh, business loans. Either they're going to focus on um, a particular area in town. Maybe yep. they want to give loans to minorities. Yep. Banks get started for a particular purpose. Now, when we start our own bank, we have to have that exact same idea mm -hmm. when it comes to how we're going to be moving our money. We have to start with a plan. So the very first step that we are going to share with you that you need to start your own banking system is you have to be accustomed to paying yourself first. Right. Right. First, ladies and gentlemen, Wealth Nation, let me know if you are paying yourself first. Hit us up in the chat and let us know if you're doing so. What we mean by this, if you've never heard of this concept, is that you're paying yourself first. Yeah. <laughs> when you when your income comes in, you are paying yourself first. Mm -hmm. Literally, you pay yourself before you pay your expenses. So every single month, you have a certain amount of money that's allocated to pay you because the worker is the worthy of the wa the worker is worthy of the wage, excuse me. So it's really important that you make sure you prioritize yourself because we don't think about the fact that we are prioritizing others mm -hmm. when we pay our cell phone bill first, we pay our house, we pay our rent, we pay our car. We pay everyone else first before us, but we were the ones who are working in the first place. Right. And paying ourselves first, what that does is that establishes a small pool of funds so that we can get our bank started. Because mm -hmm. remember, banks get started with at least $10 million. Yep. And paying ourselves first is just the discipline that we are creating to establish deposits in our own banking system. Mm -hmm. So we recommend that you do no less than 20% because again, you wanna make sure that you are paying yourself a healthy wage. Mm -hmm. So why not start putting that money aside? And as that money is either accumulating or you've already accustomed to having a set amount of deposits, meaning money that's already saved, you're then going to use that money to start your banking process. 
And what we mean by the banking process is some of you have guessed it. You're going to use whole life insurance with high cash value. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because they provide us with a guaranteed rate of return and it compounds regardless of what we're doing with the funds or not. So why not put our savings in an environment that isn't going to be affected by the market, allows us a consistent rate of return, it compounds and it's guaranteed. Now, at this point, you haven't even started banking yet. Basically what you did is you put your money into a bank. Yes. So banks at this point, they don't get started yet. They have the funds and they they have $10 million. They got the building up, but they haven't started banking yet. Yeah. Right now, we just put our funds in the bank. So mm -hmm. right now, we just put our funds in a whole life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if anything, that's rule number one. Mm -hmm. So rule number two, what do we do? Once we put our money into the insurance policy, ladies and gentlemen, it is all about understanding the plan that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So tracking money, understanding what everything is, is, is going, what you're doing with the funds. Yeah. And how are you going to maintain that bank? Well, banks at this point are maintained by deposits. They're maintained by new customers coming in. They're maintained by us putting our uh, direct deposits in the bank. Yes. So we're, what we're going to do is the same funds that we use to pay ourselves first, those are going to be our deposits into our banks. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Now, again, we still haven't done banking yet. True. We haven't. Now, at this point, the banks have deposits coming in. Why haven't they done done banking yet? They have the brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. What is it? What does it take? They have to lend that money out. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they're lending money instead of just storing the money is because it's costing them for that money to sit there. The 1% or 0.01% that we earn on our checkings and our savings account, that is an expense to the bank. And the only way for them to make that uh, expense um, profitable for them, they have to then lend those funds. Yes, yes. So it lending is almost a necessity in order to have a successful bank. If you don't have lending, then the banks won't be able to recoup those uh, expenses of you actually having your policies there. Yeah, you're right. Uh, not your policies, your uh, money. <laughs> and, and and what Darius is talking about really is just the m moving money. We talk about keeping money in motion, lending and deposits all keep money in motion mm -hmm. because if the deposits come in, we can't just let the deposits sit. The nope. banks cannot let the deposits sit because it's not making them any money. It's costing them money. It's costing them money because they have to pay you for keeping the money in their household. So when it comes to lending, all we're doing is going, oh, wait, there's money here. Why don't we lend it out, <laughs> charge an interest rate and, and get that money back and create some sort of cash flow. So that's why we're talking about rule number two in the sense of banking and moving money. Now we got to move the money mm -hmm. because you put your money into a policy. The policy is going to perform regardless of what you do. The policy is like the bank. Yeah, it's just the storage facility. So it's the, the noun. So now that you have the money in the bank, the noun, like Darius said, what are you doing with the funds? The verb. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to break that down because sometimes people just get stuck on the the policy and the cash value and how is it growing and this and that and this. And we're like, time out, time out. What is the plan <laughs> for the money? Because don't just start a policy to put money in it. What is your plan for using the money in the first place? Right. And even when we first started our YouTube channel, we shared our journey where we use it to pay off credit cards. That was the first step. Yep. The first step is to for you to get an understanding and a feel for being a new owner of a bank. Mm -hmm. And the best way to get a feel of being a new owner for your own personal banking system is to get out of unnecessary debt. Because that's cash flow that you can start redirecting back to yourself as deposits into your personal bank. Absolutely. And if you are interested in starting your own personal bank, then in the description below when this video is posted, we will provide a link for you to click on to become our client so that you can begin your banking journey. The verb. The, the verb. <laughs> well, like Darius says. So again, moving money, moving money. We need to put our minds in the mind frame of what are we doing with the money? Because mm -hmm. again, if you're going to start a bank, we have to have a plan and we're not just going to sit on the funds because remember again, banks aren't just sitting on the funds because it's costing the money. You can't create cash flow with money parked in a safe somewhere. Right. Because when the thing is, when we have our money parked as individuals, 
those funds that are parked are being utilized by somebody else or some other business. Yes, so when we have our money parked in a bank, the bank is lending that money out to somebody for the house, for the car. Yep. When we have our money parked in our 401k or our retirement account, that money is being utilized to make money for that um, uh, retirement account. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily us. We get the small, uh, what do you call it? The, the peanuts. The peanuts. <laughs> we get the peanuts. And the reason why we get the peanuts is because we're so far removed from where the action is happening. Yes. The action is happening. The actions is happening when we are actually utilizing the funds to make loans. And again, you can make loans to yourself. Mm -hmm. You can make loans to um, uh, uh, your investments. Whenever there's an opportunity to move money, there's an opportunity to make money. So we want to make sure that we have our eyes open and our ears open so that we can take advantage of it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all about motion, moving money, keeping it moving. Because again, as we see in our in our economy, the moment that money stopped, everything stopped. Yeah. So what are you doing to create some sort of system that's going to generate cash flow for you? Um, and the third point that we want to leave you with as far as the tips for creating your own banking system is something that we like to just say, get the money back. <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. So when you lend money out, when you're moving money, you need to make sure that you're getting it back. Because what are the banks doing when they give you a loan? I can't. What was that? Well, they're getting the money back. Exactly. And even if they don't get the physical cash, they're getting they're getting a car or they're getting a house out of the deal because that's the collateral. That's their guaranteed payback. Mm -hmm. So what is your guaranteed payback that you are going to not only pay yourself first, but then pay yourself back? for whatever transactions are going on. So is this investing? Is this lending? Is this paying down debt? Are you being a good steward of your money? Are you? Now, here's <laughs> are you? Let's be honest. Now, th that's a really, really good thing that you, you brought up. And what I want to uh, shed some light on is the fact that the money that comes from the bank always ends up back in the bank. Mm -hmm. So our our um, uh, the $2,400 that we got, that came to us direct deposit to our bank or we went and we cashed it at the bank and then it ended up back in the bank. Yeah. So that stimulus was more of a stimulus for the bank yeah. than it was for us because it still ended up back where it started from. <laughs> now, what are we doing <laughs> with our here. funds where it ends up right back where it started from? A lot of times we put ourselves uh, as individuals in positions where in a position where money comes out and we have to work and get more of it. It's, Yes. Can you say that again? Money comes out and we have to work in, to get more of it. Are you doing this? Right. Yeah. I did think about that. That That's really the, the reality that a lot of us live in, especially the people who are living paycheck to paycheck and wondering where in the world is my money going every single month is you spend money and you got to turn around and go and go work to get more money. Yeah. It's like we're running on the hamster wheel that generates uh, electricity for banks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can look at it that way. <laughs> so, so what can we do to create cash flow or a system that's constantly paying us and, and doing the work for us so we don't have to keep reaching back for this employment to pay us? Yeah. So it's all about that system. And when we talk about using the money, like, like don't overcomplicate this in the sense of thinking about what am I going to do with my cash value? Because right now, how much money does it cost you to live? Is it 3000 Is it 5000 Is it $10,000 a month for your household? Why not take a look at some of those bills and figure out, okay, if my cell phone bill is $200 a month, if my cable is $300 a month, whatever it is, how can I redirect these funds to come back to me instead of the cable company every single month? So that I can establish some cash flow. Exactly. So all we would do in this instance, if we're talking about getting the money back, is instead of using our own cash, we're going to use the cash from the policy to pay the cell phone bill and we're going to keep our income mm -hmm. and the income just goes back into the policy by paying the loan off. And that way we still have access to the funds, mm -hmm. but we never had to touch our cash in the first place because we used OPM other people's money, which is the policy loan to pay for our expenses. Did we may have to make any more money? No. All we did was change the direction in which we're paying money so that we can keep more of our income. Now, an interesting thing happens when you have money. Deals find you. Yes. 
Now, it's really important that with these amount of money that you start your system with or the small amount of money that you start with, you are really, really intentional with those funds. Yeah. Because how you treat that money is going to be the same way you treat more money when you get it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's, it's no different than a business. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the business that you're working in. What you're working in is a system. So what you want to do is for yourself, create a system so that not only do you outsource yourself, but you have a system where it continues to grow on top of each other so that you can start putting money aside, put the system aside, not money. You want the system aside for the next generation, because here's the thing. Money is a depreciate is basically depreciating based on. Uh, oh, yeah. Based on. Um, the economy, inflation, based taxes. on inflation, <laughs> based on inflation. <laughs> and every single time that we actually have money in our bank accounts, that money is actually losing money. Because yeah. is the amount of interest that we're earning sitting in our savings account keeping up with inflation? No. So as that money, I ask that question one more time. You breeze by that way too quickly. <laughs> did, did you guys get what he just said? Go ahead one more time. As that money is sitting there in our savings account, is it keeping up with inflation? Because inflation is basically what two point five percent. Yeah. So if we're not making at least two point five percent, we are losing money based on the funds that we have sitting there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Already, already, we're I, behind the eight ball. Already, we're behind. The, yeah, we're behind. So what are we doing? Because as soon as we borrow somebody else's money and then we have to pay them interest for that money we borrow, not only are we pay losing the money based on the interest, but we're losing money based on inflation. Yeah, yeah. So we end up paying uh, back more. <laughs> money from our hard work than what, what we started with. Yeah, we're, we're already taxed, <laughs> if that makes sense. We're already losing money because the money that we have in a traditional savings account isn't keeping up with inflation. So, so if why anything, it behooves you to do your research and understand where else can you park your money that will keep up with inflation? Because a lot of times we just don't know that there's more opportunities to put our money in other places besides the banks. Right. And the struggles that we have when it comes to our finances are self-inflicted. Ooh, because yeah. we've been conditioned for our entire life to have immediate gratification, to uh, go to the bank and get their money. Yep. Now, going to the bank is basically saying that we need to get permission in order to get the things that we need in our life. So if we need a house based on Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, we need food, water and shelter and our basic necessity for having being a happy human being is a house and we have to ask for permission that gives up power to someone else. So do we want to give up our power <laughs> to a bank where we have to work hard for the money and then the money that we pay back, we pay well over the amount of the, the money that we borrowed in the first place. No, we do not. So we have to really start changing our mind and, and thinking, how do we get ourselves off this hamster wheel? Mm -hmm. How do we position ourselves so that we can see the bigger picture and what's really going on? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, wait, there's a name for that. Own your own lifestyle. Oh, who knew? <laughs> I say that jokingly, but it, it's literally the reason why we say that all the time, because if you don't think about it in, in those terms, then you're literally just an indentured servant because you, <clears throat> with, with, with ownership, when we say that, oh, congratulations, you, you have a house, you own your house. You don't own your house unless it's been paid off. The bank owns your house and they're going to come get it if you miss any payment. Same thing with your cars or anything that you believe that you own. So if we're talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, how much of that do you actually own? We're just talking about the first step of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, yeah. food, shelter and water. How much of that can you own yourself? And if you can't, then maybe it's time for you to go back and reevaluate some things. Right. Because let's, let's think about a mortgage, a 30 year mortgage over 12 years. That's 360 payments. Yes. Right. And if you miss payment 340, you are going to foreclose on your house. Or 52 payments. You're saying paying every month. Yeah. Paying yeah. Every month. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're going to if you miss the last payment, you're not going to have a house. Yeah. Just so the other bank, yeah. Is that the power that we want to consistently give up. No, we we have a lot of things that we're being faced with um, in our society today or as we speak. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we should be thinking about is the color 
green. Yeah. Green is where you can make changes. Green is where you can uh, reclaim your power. Green is where you can not have to ask for permission to have the lifestyle that you want. <laughs> Speak on it. Ha- having control of some green. Having control of, of some green. Because <laughs> every, everything that we do revolves around green. Yes. So just to recap, essentially, the things that we're talking about, the, the three ways in which you can create your own banking system is the very first one is to create your deposits. Mm-hmm. Right. So what we said, what that means is pay yourself first. If you're already doing that, beautiful, pay yourself 20% of your income. If you can do 30, 40, 50%, amazing. Because again, you're the one who's going out and doing all of the work. So why not try to be the highest bill on your expenses that you possibly can be? And as we as we're doing this this uh, recap, where you start isn't where you're going to finish. As long as you stay uh, stay the course and consistent, the we pay ourselves the most money. Our expenses aren't, our, we are our expenses. When it comes to paying our rent, we pay ourselves. When it comes to uh, paying any of our bills, the most, the biggest bill we have is us. Mm-hmm. So that gives us control. That gives us power. That gives us the opportunity to take advantage of opportunities that presents itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and when Derry says this, we're, we're speaking literally our largest bill that we pay every single month is to us. The largest bill that we pay every single month is to us mm-hmm. because we pay ourselves first and because we value ourselves over the other expenses that are leaving our household. Yeah. So for us, it's about keeping more of our income as opposed to spending it. So when we talk about the deposits in your own banking system by paying yourself first, what does the bank need to stay in business? They need deposits. So how serious are you about creating your own deposits for your banking system? Because it might sound good today. Next month, how good does it sound for you to continue those deposits? (laughs) The, The next thing, number two, that we were talking about is what are you doing to move money? What do the banks do to move money? They lend money. They keep money in motion. By the way, if you are watching us live, could you hit that like button? We appreciate you all so much for hanging out with us today. Um, So if anything, again, keeping the money moving. Don't get focused on the policy and everything that's happening with the policy. We need you to focus on a plan outside of the policy because the policy is going to do its thing regardless. So we need you to figure out what are we doing with the money to create cash flow. To create passive income, to create that system that's going to generate the income that you need to sustain your lifestyle. Exactly. Because right now we're talking about, well, basically when it comes to using life insurance, we're saying that the life insurance or the life insurance company is just the noun, is is the bank. (laughs) Yeah. So that means that uh, banking, what you're doing with it is more, 10 times more important than the tool. Yes. Now, on another level, once we once you get to that point, you realize that the money itself isn't important. It's the system that you create because money can be anything. Money is a means of exchange. So when we have a system and we have assets built up that we can exchange for uh, something else, then we'll have what we like to call a real understanding of this whole money game because there's really levels to it. Mm -hmm. There are levels to it. And to basically round it up with with number three, it's about getting the money back. And sometimes you've heard us say recapture, meaning get all of that money back. If you're spending it for lending or paying off debt or creating assets, whatever it is, you need to make sure that there's a plan to make sure that that money comes back with friends because we need interest. Mm -hmm. We should always be trying to figure out where our money is going to lie and it needs to be in an interest bearing uh, um, activity because again, we have to keep up with inflation. Yeah. And if you aren't creating any sort of interest for yourself or for your money, we're already behind because, again, we're not keeping up with interest. Yeah. And or with inflation. And me. banking is just a, a, a small piece. Mm-hmm. What what Where you want to go is a system, which is business. Exactly. If you take a look at some of the most successful people in the world, do you think their money is liquid in um, a life insurance policy or liquid in their bank? Because at the end of the day, banks only insure up to $250,000. So multimillionaires who are, have worth of way more than $250,000, what do you think their funds are? It's in business. Warren Buffett's, his 
yeah. income, he, he pays less taxes than his secretary. How do you think he does that? It's not by having a realized income income of the billions of dollars that he's worth. It's by having a business. It's by having a system. It's by having a system. <laughs> where he can uh, work within the system to reduce his realized income. Um, so if anything, again, the three tips that you need to start your banking business, a lot of times people are just like, how do I get started? This is how you get started. If you are not used to creating your own deposits or, or paying yourself first, we recommend you get a foundation of that. Start paying yourself first six months, nine months, a year, however long it takes, because you need to make sure that you're disciplined enough to sustain it. Because if you're going to pay your policy every single month, you need to make sure that you have the money to maintain the premium because the premium isn't going anywhere. And same thing if you pay annually or quarterly, whatever it is. That's where sometimes we feel people fall off the bandwagon is because we have the best of intentions to start the policy and we know that we can pay it, but then life happens and we realize that we weren't prepared in the first place. So for us, if, you know, just, just take from our personal journey in this whole banking thing is we had to really be honest with ourselves and say, how much can we really realistically commit to for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years? right? This it wasn't just an immediate gratification thing or something. We're just trying to get to the next month. This is a commitment. And so we had to look hard at our income. We had to look hard at our, our will <laughs> and our spirits and say, is this something that we really wanted to do? Yeah. At the end of the day, guarantee one day I'm going to pass away and I'm not going to be here. Yeah. So what we're focused on is the next generation what we we can't pass on our wit, we can't pass on our intelligence, but we can pass on a business system. Mm -hmm. We can pass on multi million dollars so that they can uh, put into their business system so that it can conti continue to keep this thing going. Amen to that. So let's get into some of the comments since we're wrapping up. Thank you all for hanging out with us today. We're just going up to the top. Um, so are we talking about whole life insurance with cash value? Yes, we are, but specific whole life insurance for banking. And what we mean by that, it's gonna have a higher cash value out of the gate than a traditional whole life insurance policy would. So if you are thinking about that again, click on the link below to become our client and we will design a policy for you us or a member of our team so that we can customize it towards your financial goals and what it is that you're trying to do and it's important that you use a mutual insurance company because public traded companies have shareholders where uh money goes to yeah. mutual insurance companies don't have shareholders you actually are the shareholder because you own a policy so we want to uh, benefit from those dividends. Exactly. Shout out to Xavier. Thank you so much for the love, sir. We appreciate it. Um, Sarah says, what is the recommended percentage to pay yourself first? 20%. So we say 20%, the minimum, the minimum. Um, CEO on the banking, here we go. Love that. Um, thank you, Susan. You like geeking out on our content. Thank you for your support. We appreciate it. Um, Val's talking about infinite banking concept. You are interested indeed, sir. Um, definitely continue to watch our videos. Do your research, do as much uh, information uh, consume, consumption that you can, because infinite banking is something that we say is for everyone, but it's not for everyone at the same time. It's for anyone, but not for everyone. Yeah, because of the fact that you really need discipline in order for this thing to work. Um, Albert says, my wife and I are already send us information. <laughs> Thank you, Albert. <laughs> so again, click on the link below if you want to become our client. It'll take you to our master class and you can apply at that time. Um, Sarah, uh, would you suggest putting your emergency fund, three to six months of expenses in a policy and accrue the cash value and compound the interest? Or would you suggest keeping it separate? I was actually say keep it separate, keep it separate because that is your uh, that's your feel good account. A lot of times, initially, what you want is to have money sitting there so you can feel good about it. Mm -hmm. What we want you to do is once you have a place where you feel comfortable with your emergency fund three to six months, if that's what feels comfortable for you, then you start your uh, banking system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that to to the point of. Uh, Again, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, depending on which level we're talking about when it comes to money, we do have to feel secure. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, uh, depending on the individual, you know, that this is for anybody who's watching this now, we may feel more secure and comfortable, cozy with, with you know, 10,000, 20,000, 50, 100 in the bank, liquid. 
uh, just because it makes us feel good. So what I would say for you, Sarah, is you have to figure out what is that amount that makes you feel comfortable knowing that you have that amount of money liquid in the bank, establish that amount, and then take the rest of it and start a policy with it. Right. And I say that initially because I promise it's going to change. Yeah. yeah. The, the, when, as your relationship with money changes, your bank account changes. Yeah. Totally. And then what what happens is as you start banking, as you start creating that system, you may change your mind and go, wait a second, I don't need this money sitting here because <laughs> it's not doing anything for me. So so we, we say that at the end of the day for us, it's never to stretch anyone. It's never to put you in a, in a financial bind. We want you to be as comfortable as you possibly can. Get cozy, put your PJs on and snuggle up because it's about your finances. And if you are not comfortable any step of the way, you're not going to enjoy this process. Right. So do whatever you got to do to get comfortable. And then as you start growing and expanding your knowledge when it comes to banking, then you can start making those decisions and go, you know what, Darius and Carmen, why did I even need the money there in the first place? <laughs> it's it just, it's, it's levels to this. Yeah. Money is truly a mindset. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the, the more you expand your mind, the more you expand your bank account. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Val says, would you take, um, would taking a loan for yourself in place of acquiring a property be taken into consideration by the lender? Um, I am processing your question, sir. Would taking a loan for yourself in place of acquiring a property be taken into consideration by a lender? Uh, now Val, we may need you to, to elaborate a little bit more. Are you talking about if you borrow from your life insurance policy, it doesn't get considered for yeah. credit. It, 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 nobody knows. It's not in your credit your, report. If, yeah. if that's what you're asking, I think that that's a, what he was trying to say because um, it's your own banking system. So whatever happens with the insurance, it's not being recorded uh, on the, in the credit bureaus. So you don't have to worry about that. And if anything, that's the whole reason why we like this is because we can operate underground and nobody knows what we're doing. <laughs> if, if that makes sense. Um, next level tech, passive income. Yes, absolutely. Um, Cindy, one of the best things about IBC is that I have control and the money all comes back to me. You got it, girlfriend. Sarah, thank you guys. You're so welcome. Uh, Albert, we have an LLC that we just started. Should we put it in an LLC or keep it private? Uh, we always recommend doing this from a personal standpoint for taxes. We are not tax professionals, but you should consult with one uh, so that they can give you all of the, the pros and cons to starting a policy on yourself versus starting it with your business. Yeah. If you started with your business, there's a potential there for it to be a uh, tax. Yes. So that's not where you want to be. Mm -hmm. We're trying to stay tax free as much as we possibly can. Especially if the business owns it. But you want to make sure that you refer to your tax professional for uh, tax advice. Yes. Shout out to Christina. Thank you so much. We love you too, girlfriend. Michael. Um, so how much ideally do you need to do something like this to get it going? Michael, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, for the longest, we have always said 10 times your age on a monthly basis, which is if you're 30, that's $300 a month. If you're 40, that's $400 a month. If you want to do it annually, just times that by 12. But as we continue to, to learn and grow and really expand within infinite banking, if we're being honest with you, you should start with no less than $500 a month. Well, we started with uh, 10000 yeah. So, so if anything, if you really want to take this seriously, and if you really want to start in a position where you can have the, the tangible cash that you need to, to do something, to invest, to pay off debt, to whatever it is, then we recommend that you should at least start with $500 a month. Yeah. And also let's, let's, let's think about the, the question. If you have to ask what's the minimum, then yeah. maybe you should uh, reconsider how much money you actually have to start. Yeah. And, and paying yourself first, again, going back to how much are you willing to commit to yourself? Or how much are you worth? Mm. Marinate on that for a second. So hopefully you are worth more than, than what we're even telling you, because it's all about those deposits that you need for your banking system. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's see. What else are we talking about? Grandma's wealth. <laughs> what's going on? It's been a minute, but we're, we hope that you all are well. Uh, Cutie Pie, I just joined. How does putting money in insurance policy so great? Am I reading it right? How no does one gets the money until I die, right? No. So mm. what, we're, what we want to do is life insurance traditionally is 
something that people say uh, you want to have it in the event that you pass away, which yeah. is true because you're guaranteed one day you're going to pass away and you want to make sure that you have the heirs or the beneficiaries or the next generation set up. But we also understand that the way life insurance has been advertised or marketed to isn't the way that banks utilize life insurance. Mm -hmm. The largest purchases of whole life insurance are banks. Mm -hmm. Banks don't put their savings in banks. They put their savings in life insurance. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is start treating life insurance the way um, banks and Fortune 500 companies utilize uh, life insurance policies, which is while we are living. Mm -hmm. And we utilize it while we are living in the place of getting loans from the bank. Yes. Yeah. So that there's two thing. There's two facets to this. We want to make sure that you understand PewDiePie. There's the cash value, which is the money that you can utilize while you're living. It is <laughs> yeah, or that's what it says. <laughs> um, so what we want to make sure that you understand is where does no, it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to make sure that you understand is that when you're using the cash value, when you get a loan. A loan by insurance terms is a prepayment of death benefit. A loan is a prepayment of death benefit. I'm just repeating that to make sure we're all he hearing it. Prepayment of death benefit. What does that mean? The insurance company is giving you portions of the death benefit now while you're living. A lot of people look at the cash value and the death benefit as, as separate, but really they're one and the same. A loan is a prepayment of death benefit. So the insurance company is allowing you to utilize your death benefit now while you're living and you don't have to die for it and not be able to touch it whatsoever. So in your cases, again, we need to think about banking. Is, is, is a bank ever going to cash out? No. Why? Because they have a system that's creating cash flow. So in your question, when you're saying, you know, should I just cash out early or whatever it is, you can cash out if you want to, but you're just destroying your banking system because now at that point you have nothing to pass to the next heirs. So if you have outstanding loans and you pass, the insurance company is just going to deduct whatever you have outstanding from the death benefit and the rest of it gets paid out to your heirs if you have them. So again, we need to think about this policy as a banking system and not the life insurance that we know it to be. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, let's see, Val, uh, be your own bank is such a gem. Yes, it is. So becoming your own banker by R. Nelson Nash, the godfather of this whole concept. We totally recommend if you have not read it to read it, but read it before you even buy a policy. Yes, please do. Um, but the way in which we say to read it is read it like a textbook. A lot of people read it like it's a novel or something. Read it like a textbook, highlight it, go back to it, refer back to it. Darius and I read it quarterly. We've read it so many times that we can quote some of the pages <laughs> of the book um, because we're constantly getting new gems from it. So this isn't something that we just read once and we put on the shelf. Uh, let's see, where, where did I leave off? Um, Sarah, hi, Albert. They're referring to whole life insurance with high cash value. Garrett Gunderson has a book. What would the Rockefellers do? Yes, definitely check that one out. Let's see if there's anything. I'm just going through this quickly because I know we've been on for a minute. I think we are good through this. Um, if I do not pay the loan back, will it hurt? Will it really hinder me? Okay. So if you don't pay the loan back, that means you're still making money. Mm -hmm. We do not get loans without a purpose. Yes. Think about a loan you get from a bank. Do you get a loan from a bank without a purpose? No. Or the intention of not paying it back. Or the intention of not paying it back. No. So why we we will no not why we will not do our bank the exact same way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So no loan gets taken out without the uh, understanding of how it's going to get paid back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because if you don't pay it back, it's costing you money. You know, the majority of the insurance companies are going to pay, are going to charge you 5% simple interest. So again, there's a reason why we get a loan because we know we're going to make more than 5% simple interest so that it doesn't cost us to keep the money outstanding. And again, if you go to the bank, you are not going to not pay them unless you want to give them up, give up the collateral. <laughs> so again, ladies and gentlemen, that the point of is hitting, hitting home, you treating yourself the exact same way you would the bank. Uh, what up, Mr. Denzel? Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence, sir. Uh, we're just going through the questions and making sure that we're answering as many as we can. Yeah, there was a question on here about um, why get a loan?
still don't see the benefit. Okay. Still don't see the benefit of putting uh, into a policy specifically, which, oh, okay. We already answered that question. Yep. All right. So let's see if there's anything else. Um, question on refinancing a property I paid off already to pull out the cash value. What? Re refinancing. Yeah, refinancing. Uh, we never really enjoy refinancing. Um, the, the reason being refinancing, you're starting the process all over again. So that's a whole bunch of interest that we're already starting. Hopefully this is a property that you've acquired recently and you haven't been sitting on for, for 20 years in your refine. Um, so yeah, I, I totally would uh, recommend not refining if you haven't done it already, um, but absolutely crunch the numbers to make sure that it makes sense for you to refi and that you're not just shelving out a whole bunch more interest. Um, as an agent for the policy, do the loans go through you also? So the loans, uh, we aren't the insurance company. So all of the loans get processed through the insurance company. If anything, as the agent, we're just the helper in making sure that the transaction goes down. Mm -hmm. So when you do request a loan from the insurance company, it's just a piece of paper that you fill out and you sign it, you get a witness and you request how much money do you want. And it's that simple. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's everything that we have going out. Ooh, Denzel says, um, we have our video coming out next week. It is so exciting. Look forward to that. We're going to be on Denzel's channel next week. Really excited. Shout outs to that. We have so much fun speaking to Denzel about velocity banking and infinite banking and just being mindful with what's going on in the world of money. Um, so thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for listening to us today. If you haven't already liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you will catch us next Wednesday where we are going to talk about more opportunities regarding infinite banking. And if you haven't already, then go ahead and click on the next video, which is all about how infinite banking works. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you are out there in the world, make sure you own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will. <laughs>